Welcome to the Basic Infection Control Skills License, or BICSL, training module. In this training, you'll learn about the main principles of infection prevention and control. These include hand hygiene, personal protective equipment, or PPE, and isolation precautions. After watching this video, your BICSL instructor will ask you to demonstrate hand hygiene technique and proper technique of wearing and removing personal protective equipment, and will assess your competency. If you complete the training successfully, along with completing the required vaccines, your instructor will issue you the BICSL card. Part 1 Hand Hygiene Hands are the main pathways of germ transmission during healthcare. When healthcare workers fail to clean their hands between patient contact, germs in their hands can be passed from person to person and spread infection. Hand hygiene is, therefore, the most important measure to avoid the transmission of harmful germs and prevent healthcare associated infections. Hand hygiene is considered the main part of the standard precautions that are the minimum infection prevention practices that apply to all patient care. How and when to practice hand hygiene. 1. Alcohol-based hand rub. Duration of the entire procedure, 20 to 30 seconds. Wash hands instead when visibly soiled. How to hand rub. 1. Apply a palmful of the product in a cupped hand, covering all surfaces. 2. Rub hands palm to palm. 3. Right palm over left dorsum with interlaced fingers and vice versa. 4. Palm to palm with fingers interlaced. 5. Backs of fingers to opposing palms with fingers interlocked. 6. Rotational rubbing of left thumb clasped in right palm and vice versa. 7. Rotational rubbing backwards and forwards with clasped fingers on right hand and left palm and vice versa. 8. Once dry, your hands are safe. 2. Hand washing with soap and water. Duration of the entire procedure. 40 to 60 seconds. How to hand wash. Wet hands with water. 1. Apply enough soap to cover all hand surfaces. 2. Rub hands palm to palm. 3. Right palm over left dorsum with interlaced fingers and vice versa. 4. Palm to palm with fingers interlaced. 5. Backs of fingers to opposing palms with fingers interlocked. 6. Rotational rubbing of left thumb clasped in right palm and vice versa. 7. Rotational rubbing backwards and forwards with clasped fingers of right hand in left palm and vice versa. 8. Rinse hands with water. 9. Dry hands thoroughly with a single-use towel. 10. Use towel to turn off faucet. 11. Your hands are now safe. When hands should be cleaned. 5 moments for hand hygiene. Moment 1. Before touching a patient. Why? To protect the patient against colonization and, in some cases, against exogenous infection by harmful germs carried on your hands. When? Clean your hands before touching a patient when approaching him or her. Moment 2. Before clean or aseptic procedure. Why? To protect the patient against infection with harmful germs, including his or her own germs entering his or her body. When? Clean your hands immediately before accessing a critical site with infectious risk for the patient. For example, a mucous membrane, non-intact skin, an invasive medical device. Moment 3. After body fluid exposure risk. Why? To protect you from the colonization or infection with patients' harmful germs and to protect the healthcare environment from germ spread. When? Clean your hands as soon as the task involving an exposure risk to bodily fluids has ended and after glove removal. Moment 4. After touching a patient. Why? To protect you from colonization with patient germs and to protect the healthcare environment from germ spread. When? Clean your hands when leaving the patient's side, after having touched the patient. 5. After touching patient surroundings. Why? To protect you from colonization with patient germs that may be present on surfaces or objects in patient surroundings and to protect the healthcare environment against germ spread. When? Clean your hands after touching any object or furniture when leaving the patient's surroundings without having touched the patient. Part 2. Personal Protective Equipment, or PPE. Personal protective equipment is special equipment you wear to create a barrier between you and germs. This barrier reduces the chance of touching, being exposed to, and spreading germs. Personal protective equipment, or PPE, helps prevent the spread of germs in the hospital. This can protect patients and healthcare workers from infections. Gloves, gowns, surgical masks, eye goggles, 
face shield, and respirator masks are all examples of PPE that may be worn in the provision of health care. Types of Personal Protective Equipment, or PPE, gloves, should be worn when there may be exposure to blood, bodily fluids, secretions, or excretions, and when handling contaminated equipment. Aprons and gowns should be worn to protect uniforms and clothing from moisture or soiling during direct patient care. Face shield or goggles should be worn when there is a risk of body fluids splashing onto mucous membranes, like eyes and nose. Eyes can be protected by wearing either goggles or a face shield. Surgical masks should be worn to protect the healthcare worker from splashes and droplets to the area of the healthcare worker's nose, mouth, and respiratory tract. They do not provide protection against airborne particles. Donning and doffing of personal protective equipment, or PPE. First, sequence for putting on personal protective equipment, or PPE. One, gown, fully cover torso from neck to knees, arms to end of wrists, and wrap around the back. Fasten in back of neck and waist. Two, mask or respirator. Secure ties or elastic bands at middle of head and neck. Fit flexible band to nose bridge. Fit snug to face and below chin. Fit check respirator. 3. Goggles or face shield. Place over the face and eyes and adjust to fit. 4. Gloves. Extend to cover wrist of isolation gown. One. Gloves. Outside of gloves are contaminated. Using a gloved hand, grasp the palm area of the other gloved hand and peel off first glove. Hold removed glove in gloved hand. Slide fingers of ungloved hand under the remaining glove at wrist and peel off second glove over first glove. Discard the gloves in a waste container. 2. Goggles or face shield. Outside of goggles or face shield are contaminated. If your hands get contaminated during goggle or face shield removal, immediately wash your hands or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Remove goggles or face shield from the back by lifting headband or earpieces. If the item is reusable, place in designated receptacle for reprocessing. Otherwise, discard in a waste container. 3. Gown. Gown front and sleeves are contaminated. If your hands get contaminated during gown removal, immediately wash your hands or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Unfasten gown ties, taking care that sleeves don't contact your body when reaching for ties. Pull gown away from neck and shoulders, touching inside of gown only. Turn gown inside out. Fold or roll into a bundle and discard in a waste container. 4. Mask or respirator. Front of mask or respirator is contaminated. Do not touch. If your hands get contaminated during mask or respirator removal, immediately wash your hands or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Grasp bottom ties or elastics of the mask or respirator, then the ones at the top, and remove without touching the front. Discard in a waste container. 5. Wash hands or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer immediately after removing all PPE. Transmission-Based Precautions Droplet Precautions This patient suffers from flu. People with flu can spread it to others within 1 to 2 meters away. Droplet transmission of flu viruses spread mainly by droplets made when people with flu cough, sneeze, or talk. These droplets can land in the mouths or noses of people who are nearby or possibly be inhaled into the lungs. Examples of diseases transmitted by large droplets include influenza, meningococcal meningitis, and pertussis. Precautions must be implemented to prevent droplet transmission. Implementation of Droplet Precautions the patient should be placed in a single room if available, and the door can remain open. If single rooms are not available, patients who are infected or colonized with the same microorganism may share a room. Staff should wear a surgical mask when within one meter of the patient. In addition, the staff should perform hand hygiene prior to entering and immediately after leaving the patient's room. Airborne Precautions this patient suffers from open pulmonary tuberculosis. TB bacteria are spread through the air from one person to another. Airborne transmission occurs when the bacteria or viruses travel on dust particles or small respiratory droplets that may become aerialized when some people sneeze, cough, laugh, or exhale. They hang in the air much like invisible smoke. They can travel on air currents over considerable distances. Examples of diseases transmitted by airborne routes include tuberculosis, measles, and chickenpox. Precautions must be implemented to prevent airborne transmission. Implementation of airborne transmission. Patients with a suspected or confirmed airborne infectious disease should be isolated in a negative pressure room 
Pressure differentials should be monitored daily when the room is in use. Healthcare workers should wear appropriately fit-tested N95 respirator upon entering the room. The respirator should be removed outside the patient room after use, followed by hand hygiene. Contact precautions. This patient has a wound infected with a multi-drug resistant organism. This type of infection can spread by touching the patient or infected surfaces in the room. Examples of diseases that can be transmitted through direct or indirect contact include gastrointestinal infections, including diarrhea of unknown origin, wound and skin infections, such as impetigo, and colonization with multi-drug resistant bacteria, such as methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA. Precautions must be implemented to prevent contact transmission. Implementation of contact precautions. The patient should be placed in a single room if available and the door can remain open. If single rooms are not available, patients who are infected or colonized with the same microorganism may share a room. Staff should wear a long-sleeved gown and gloves for all interactions that may involve contact with a patient or the patient's environment. In addition, the staff should perform hand hygiene prior to entering and immediately after leaving the patient's room.